do not want war. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, I mean, come on, it's a great film. I mean, it might not be the most scientifically accurate film out there, but I love it. Go! It's probably because I've always been fascinated by the idea of animals using tools and solving problems using those tools. Which is why it's probably not too surprising that I got pretty excited when I heard the news that several non-human primates have actually entered their own stone ages. And some of them have been doing it for at least thousands of years. And this has spawned a whole new field of research called primate archaeology. Okay, quickly, let's just get a definition out of the way. Primates, a mammal of an order that includes the lemurs, bush babies, tarsiers, marmosets, monkeys, apes, and humans. Or put simply, just for the purposes of this video, both monkeys and apes are primates. The four non-human primates that are using stone tools are found around the globe. There are white-faced capuchins in Coiba National Park, just off the coast of Panama. There's long-tailed macaques on the shores of southern Thailand and Myanmar. There's bearded capuchins in Brazil's Serra de Capivara National Park, and there's chimpanzees in the forests of the Ivory Coast in Africa. And primate archaeologists dug up sites that showed that those last two, the bearded capuchins and the chimpanzees, have actually been in their stone ages for at least 3,000 and 4,000 years, so since around the time that Stonehenge was created, which is a pretty crazy amount of time. Now, until pretty recently, we humans thought that tool use was one of the defining features that separated us from other animals. But in recent decades, countless examples of tool use in other animals has been discovered and confirmed, like octopuses using coconut shells as protection, or crows using sticks to get access to hard to reach food, or gorillas using sticks to measure the depth of water. But long term, stone tool use is kind of a bigger deal. I mean look, we humans are pretty great. Over thousands of years of technological development, we've managed to create some pretty incredible structures, and we've managed to invent some pretty mind blowing stuff, but it all had to start somewhere. Some say that the Stone Age was one of the most significant points in our technological journey. When our ancestors entered it over 3 million years ago, the use of stone tools massively increased our access to resources, which could have been a key factor that allowed us to grow bigger brains, which would have allowed us to create better tools, which would have given us even more access to even more resources, and so on and so on. And for these primates, it's doing the exact same thing. It's giving them more access to resources that they may have had zero access to before. The white-faced capuchins use stones as hammers and anvils and smash things like nuts, crabs and snails to crack open shells. The chimpanzees mainly use them to crack open a range of different nuts. And the bearded capuchins use them for cracking nuts, processing seeds and fruits, digging and other things like sexual displays. And the macaques, which use stone tools as axes and hammers to prey on things like shellfish and nuts, have become so good at what they do that they've destabilized the local shellfish population. And it's thought they might deplete their local prey populations so much that they'll have no use for stone tools. So they'll stop using them and eventually they might forget how to use them altogether. Now there are actually other animals that use stone tools, like bearded vultures that drop bones from the sky onto rocks to crack them open and access the marrow inside. And tusfish have been known to smack clams against rocks to open them up. But these primates that I've been talking about are by far the most extensively studied. A problem with these other stone tool users is that it's hard to find out about it through archaeological methods, because the stone tools that they use don't really show any distinct wear patterns or identifiable characteristics. But sea otters, who use stone tools to pound and crack open things like snails, mussels and clams, might be the exception, as recently researchers have found identifiable distinctive usage marks on rocks left by the otters. So I wouldn't be surprised if I'm making an otters have entered the stone age video pretty soon. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. All of these animal archaeology studies can teach us a lot about our own history and development of tool use, especially considering that these primate tools are very similar to the tools created by our ancestors in the early days of our stone age. But there is a key difference in technique that might still set us apart. It's a process that we developed called flaking. This is where a rock known as a hammer stone is smashed against another rock called a core stone in order to break off a smaller, sharp piece known as a flake. 
These flakes allowed us to access food like never before, as they acted like blades to cut meat straight off of an animal carcass, which were potentially killed by larger predators like lions. So they allowed us to properly compete with larger predators for the first time. And the development of this new flaking process was big, as it's not just using a stone tool. It's using stone tools as tools to make different, more efficient stone tools for extracting even more resources. And this set us apart from other stone tool users, at least until now. You see, there's some recent evidence that these bearded capuchins are actually making and using these stone flakes as tools. Although it might be completely unintentional, basically just a happy accident of smacking rocks together. But it could get really interesting if more evidence comes out to support this whole idea. Okay, alright, so what does all of this actually mean? Are these monkeys and apes about to rise up and build these mega structures and develop all these technologies to rival humans? Well, look at it like this. After we entered our stone age and deliberately started making flaked stone tools. They remained pretty much unchanged for a million years. And then once our ancestors started making refined flat stone axes, they then remained unchanged for another million years. So basically, even if these monkeys are deliberately flaking their stones, it took us a very long time to move on from that. And also, they might not even have the resources. The reason that other great apes like gorillas and orangutans haven't got on board with stone tool use yet might simply be due to the fact that they spend so much of their time in trees and in areas where stones just aren't really that abundant. So there might literally just not be enough rocks to learn the behavior and then pass the behavior on to future generations. And on top of this, most if not all of their habitat is being made smaller and smaller by human activities. So the time for them to make the most of their environment for tool use might have already passed. So it's likely that we won't be seeing too much change. But we could see more discoveries like these that continue to challenge the way that we think about ourselves. Then again, those capuchins have been known to be pretty fast learners. 